now that we have had a quick overview of Mongo's ODM and how Mongo's brings schemas to structure the documents that we store in our MongoDB, let's look at how we make use of the Mongo's uh, node module and then incorporate it into our node application and then use Mongo's to communicate with our uh, MongoDB server and then store and retrieve documents with structured information in the documents. To get started on this exercise, go to a convenient location on your computer. So here I am in the Node.js folder where I have been uh, storing all the uh, examples from this course. And then I'm going to create a new folder named Node Mongoose. And this is where we will create the node application using Mongo's uh, next. In the terminal or the command window, move to the node Mongo's folder and then initialize a node application there. So let me type npm in it and then initialize the node application. And then I would name the application as node Mongo's. And uh, the entry point is index.js get history, keywords, author, and license, and we'll say OK. And once your node uh, package.json file is created, open the project in the text editor of your choice. So here I have my project open in um, Visual Studio. Let me go into the package.json file and then add in the start script. And then we'll say start node index. As usual, whenever we start out with a new uh, node application. Then going to the terminal or the command window, let's install Mongoose so at the prompt, type npm install mongoose save, which at the moment is mongoose 5.1.7. And so these are the versions that I'm going to be using in this course. Then going to my application in the editor, let me create a subfolder in the project called as models. So this is where I'm going to be storing all the models for my application. And in the models folder, let me create a new file named dishes.js. So this is where I'm going to create the schema and the model for my dishes document that I'm going to store, the dishes collection, which stores the documents for each dishes. So right there, let me first import mongoose. So we'll require mongoose in this file and then say const schema is mongoose schema. And then we'll create the schema here. So we'll say const dish schema new schema. So this is where I define the schema for my dish. And inside this schema, let me define the various values. So I'll say name which is the type string. So this is the schema type. And then this I would declare as required. So I'll say true. So every document will have the name as a required field there. And then I will also declare this as unique, meaning that no two documents should have the same name field in there. 
So that is the first field in my document. Then we will also include another field called as description. The description is of the type string and required true. Also, we can have Mongoose automatically insert timestamps into our model. So right there, we can just set up the flag time stamps true. So this will automatically add the created at and updated at two timestamps into each document that is stored in our application. And it will automatically uh, update these values uh, whenever we update the document. And the created at will be automatically initialized when the document is first created of this type. After this, we will say var dishes. So given the schema, now we're going to construct the model from this schema. So we'll say mongoose model and dish. And this is going to be using the dish schema that we have just declared earlier. And then we will export this model from this file here. So we'll say module export dishes. So now we have constructed the Mongo schema and the corresponding model, and the model is now exported from here. So this can be imported in our application and used. So within our project folder, let me create a new file named index.js. And in the index.js file, let me first require mongoose. And then after this, we can say const dishes require models dishes because we have already created the dishes model in the models dishes um, file there and then we are requiring it here. Now to establish the connection to the Mongo server, we'll say const URL MongoDB localhost 27017 confusion. So this database um, is the one that we will connect to from our application. And then after that, we can establish the connection by saying const connect mongoose Mongo supports this connect method, which takes the URL as the first parameter. So once we have established this, then we simply say connect then. Note that since we are already using promises, we can just say connect then, and then this will take a function as the parameter. And inside here, we can now connect to the database. So now, once this connection is established, let me do a console log saying connected correctly to server. And here, I can create a new dish by saying, var new dish and then dishes and inside here I can specify a document. So I'm creating a new dish of this kind and then so in here I will specify the two fields that are required. So I'll say name
description. And so this is how you would create a new dish. And then once we create a new dish from the model, we'll simply say new dish save. The save method will cause this dish value to be saved. And then as you expect, we'll return a promise. And then in here, we will get the dish value as the callback in there. And then I can simply log the dish value here. And then after that, we'll say dishes find and so we'll find all the dishes and then we'll say exec. The exec will ensure that this is executed and that will return a promise. And so that promise will be returned so that we can then chain the method to the remaining ones. So you see how I am using promises and then I am invoking the various methods. So this one finds all the dishes um, within my database in the dishes collection and then makes it available to me. So when I get the dishes, then I can just console log the dishes just to see what is returned. And this obviously at this stage should return this one single dish that I've inserted into my um, dishes collection. And then we will say return dishes remove with an empty JavaScript object, which will remove all the dishes from the database and then then and return Mongo's connection close, which closes the connection to the database. And catch any error at this point. So we'll use the catch and then console log. That's it. So what we are doing here is we are creating the new this dish and then we are saving the dish. Then we are finding all the dishes from the collection. That's it. So we and we are using promises here. So we have chained all the thens in here. That's it. Let's save the changes and then see this application executing. Going to the terminal, add the prompt, type npm start and you would see that my node application runs and then it shows first that it has created this particular dish. Note in particular that these two fields updated at and created at, these two timestamps have automatically been added into the dish here. And so you can see that the created at and updated at timestamp are exactly the same at the moment. And then um, the ID is auto also automatically added in. And in the next step, we are printing out all the dishes that have been retrieved. And so you can see that this one single dish is in the collection, dishes collection there. And that is what is printed out on the screen here. Let's now initialize the git repository and then let's set up the .git ignore file. So going to the editor, let me create the .git ignore file and then add node modules to the git ignore file and save the changes. And then going back to the prompt. Let me type git status and we see that we have these files that have not been checked in. So we'll say git add and then git commit with the message mongoose part one. With this, we complete this exercise. 
In this exercise, we have seen how easy it is to set up a node application with Mongos and connect to our uh, MongoDB server and then interact with it. Now, since Mongos builds upon the MongoDB server, Mongos can access all the uh, various uh, methods that are supported by the MongoDB driver also.